Hey everyone, this is Nick and I can't code. I've been working for the past 12 years as a product owner, project manager, chief product officer, any other title you want to put on that same exact job. So I did pick up a few notions along the way, but the closest thing to a real program I ever wrote was a graphical RPG for my Casio calculator when I was in high school. But if that's also your case, don't let that deter you from trying to contribute to any FOSS project you might want. Of course, coders and developers are at the heart of any project. You need them to actually write the code. But other skills are also required into the making of a FOSS project. So let's take a look at what you can do. What today's sponsor can do is help you make sure that your internet connection stays secure and private. This video is sponsored by Safing. They make the Portmaster, which is an amazing tool that lets you control and monitor your internet connection with a simple graphical user interface. You get block lists, you get profiles depending on your current connection, and you can even tweak settings per app. It's also completely open source and free. Safing also makes the SPN or Safing Privacy Network. It's a powerful VPN alternative which spreads your connections across the globe instead of rerouting all your connections to only one server. With the SPN, you can be everywhere at once and no website can build a profile from your visits and your location. Of course, you also get all the benefits from a traditional VPN. If that's something you'd like to try and if you want to help support Safing's open source work, you can subscribe to the SPN right now or download the Portmaster by heading in the link in the description below. Okay, so one of the first things you can do to help a project is to talk about it. Yeah, that might seem dumb, but it's true. A lot of FOSS projects, Linux desktop included, lack notoriety. People just don't know they exist. And even among people who use Linux, you would be surprised at how many people don't know about a lot of the apps available. Every time I do a Linux apps video, I get comments from viewers telling me that they didn't know about this or that, and it's really cool to help people discover these new things. So you can just talk to your friends, to your family, or to people online about the cool applications and the cool Linux distros that you use, that you discovered, and that you like. All the while respecting the fact that some people might not be interested. Talking about things does not mean pestering people with your preferences, obviously. There's a line between recommendation and straight up being annoying to others and forcing your favorite things down their throats. Do not cross that line, it does more damage than good. And if, like me, you do not have any friends, you can always start a blog or a YouTube channel to talk about the things you like. These are also good ways to help spread the word about projects you like, explaining how you're using them, how they might be better than other solutions, the various features you enjoy. Even if this isn't met with overwhelming success and a giant audience in the first years, the people that do read and watch will absolutely thank you for it and might even teach you a few things. It took me four years to bring this channel to a point where I would consider it successful and still I kept on babbling about elementary OS and various applications that I loved. Do not let a small audience prevent you from talking about the things you like. That really helps various projects around you. Another way you can help a project more directly is by writing documentation. A lot of projects are spearheaded by developers, understandably. And developers, while they're amazing at writing code and developing features and fixing bugs, they do tend to not spend as much time actually explaining how things work. A lot of FOSS projects lack further documentation than a simple GitHub readme file. And documentation is important. Whether it's just a first steps page to help people install the application, where to find it, how to get started, or if it's a complete user manual with screenshots and all the details and all the text paragraphs that you might want to add, it's really, really helpful. A bunch of projects also have out of date documentation with all the screenshots, options that have moved, new things that aren't documented, or entire pages that are now completely irrelevant. Going over that and fixing it can be a great help to let new users get to grips with an app. And then you can also contribute tutorials. This is more for bigger projects that have tons of features. 
But a good tutorial can go a very long way compared to a simple manual that explains what a feature does. Learning how to use GIMP or Kdenlive was way easier for me thanks to a bunch of YouTube videos and written tutorials that guided me step by step. These are invaluable and a lot of projects just don't have them. Documentation is a very good way to get started contributing to various projects. And I think a lot of projects will be very grateful for people who want to write said documentation because that frees up time for them to actually write the app and write the code. Another great way of making sure your favorite app stays great is by testing and writing bug reports. The more you use an app, the more you're bound to find issues, small or big, that make your favorite project less usable or detract from the experience. And instead of immediately going to Twitter and tell people how atrocious this is and how this bug ruins your life, you can also contribute a bug report on the GitHub or GitLab page for the application and make sure that the developer knows about it. There generally is a process in place for this, often detailed on the homepage of the project. For some Linux distros, you even have a button directly in the settings to report an issue. Generally, what you will want to do is look through existing bug reports to see if your issue has already been contributed. If it has, then you can add a comment to let the developer know you're affected, or add a plus one or a thumbs up to the issue to increase its count and help the developers prioritize it. Writing a good and legible bug report also requires a bunch of information on how you've encountered it to let the developer reproduce it and fix it. Just saying, this doesn't work, doesn't work. Trust me, I tried that for most of my career. What you'll actually want to do is give as much information on the steps you took to encounter that issue, your specific system, any tweaks you might have made to the app, the expected behavior, and the actual behavior that seems bugged. Writing a good bug report is a skill, it's, it's actually even a job, but don't worry, if you have forgotten some information, the developer will ask you for it generally when they try fixing the bug. So you will learn by doing and learn what to include and what is useless. Testing beta software is also super useful. The more configurations something is tested on, the less chance there is to have a big problem down the track. Most big projects like KDE, GNOME, Distributions, OBS and others have a beta track that you can follow. And each time you encounter a problem, you can just report it easily and help ensure your project goes as smoothly as possible. It's also a great way to try features out before they actually release and give your feedback on it. And also you can boast online because your PC can do stuff that other PCs can't. If you speak more than one language, you can also help translate projects. Most FOSS projects are in constant need of translations for the new stuff they add, the stuff they change and tweak, or they just lack a translation in your language completely. Contributing translations is a cool way to just use your natural language skills to help others use an application you love. Depending on the size of the project, there are multiple ways to go about it. Some have their translations in a centralized translation platform. Some have their own platforms like KDE or GNOME. And smaller projects generally just handle their translations in the project's code itself. The best thing to do is to head over to the contributors documentation that most big projects have and see how you can contribute or join a team. For smaller projects, you can generally just reach out to the developer and ask how they want you to contribute a translation. Generally, there are a few guidelines to ensure that translations are consistent across the whole project so that something isn't called by three different names in three different places or to avoid certain terms that aren't clear enough. Bigger projects generally have these well explained and teams already exist for most major languages that you can join to help. Or you can create your own team to start translating into a language that isn't supported. Time to translate GNOME into the HUT language, I guess. If all of that looks too time consuming or too scary, you can also provide support for other users online. Not as in tech support, headphones and microphone and dealing with angry people that can't explain their issue, more like answer people's questions online. If you have experience with a project or an app, 
Your knowledge is invaluable. You know what the options are, where they are. You know how to use the thing, configure it, install it, and maybe fix a bunch of problems you've already encountered. That knowledge can serve others as well. Most projects either have a Discord server, forums, or for older ones, IRC. And joining these just makes you more helpful to others, as long as you don't tell them to RTFM. RTFM for read the subscribe manual is probably the least constructive and intelligent way of answering a question. If a user asks that question that might seem super stupid to you, it might not just be laziness. It might just be that the answer wasn't easy to find, either by lack of documentation, tutorials, or because the resources aren't well laid out or well explained. Or sometimes just by lack of motivations. Some beginners are just very lazy and did not take the time to research their issue before asking a question, even if it's a very common one. In that case, it's time to introduce them to LMDDGTFY, or let me duck duck go that for you. Jokes aside, a civil behavior always helps if you want to help others. Telling them to do their homework takes you just as long as answering their question, as dumb as it is. A few projects, mostly big ones, will also benefit from some project management and prioritization. Big projects receive a ton of bug reports, feature requests, and general demands. And triaging this, making sure that the most urgent bugs are fixed first, and the most interesting features are done first, can be a pain when you have 300 issues open. A project manager can definitely help with that, to sort things into what's critical, what's easy to fix for beginner coders, what's really an edge use case, or even what's a desirable feature or not. These roles might not be the first ones you'll be able to do when you start contributing. They'll be entrusted to people that are well known within the project, and that have proven they understand the project's vision and structure. But once you've contributed for a time, opening bug reports, answering some, testing new features, or writing documentation, that's definitely something that you can offer to help with. That's not something that I would personally do because I've been doing that for the past 12 years and I'm pretty much sick of it. But if it's a skill you have, or a skill you want to acquire and take into the professional world, it's definitely a great way to help. And there are a ton of other ways to contribute. You could help design marketing material for events, like flyers, posters, you could help redesign icons for a project, or even make mock-ups for new features you'd like to see. We often see this in GNOME and KDE, for example, where mock-ups are shared, feedback is given, and then the actual mock-up is being implemented. If you have good design skills and have good ideas for features, there is no reason why anybody would not want to work on them. You can also organize events, like Linux install parties, or help organize these. You can give talks to various events, help others install software on their devices. You can join the various Telegram groups or servers to discuss new features and give your input. Not knowing how to code doesn't mean you can't contribute to a project. Projects need more skills than just coding. And a lot of people already have these skills and can use them. And if you really want to learn how to code, there are a bunch of issues in most projects marked as easy to fix or for beginners or a page written as where to start. So you can try tackling these small issues and small bugs to learn how the code works and hone your skills. And of course, if you don't want to contribute, that's also completely fine. No judgment here. Apart from a few pages of documentation for the Ubuntu French community back in 2006, a few tutorials for bug fixes, and my videos, I haven't exactly been extremely helpful. That's the beauty of open source. Even by using it, you're already doing your part. Just like today's sponsor is doing its part to let you get a device that runs Linux out of the box. Tuxedo is a company based in Germany. They make laptops and desktops that ship with Linux out of the box. You can choose from a selection of distros when you configure your device, among a ton of other configuration options for RAM, for SSD, for graphics card, for CPUs, even your logo on the back. But of course, you can also install your own distro on them because you know that the hardware is well supported under Linux. I've personally been moving most of my workflow to a Stellaris 15, which is their high-end gaming workstation laptop. And I've been editing all the past videos since the Plasma 5.25 review on it, and it's been amazing. Expect a review in the coming days. But if you need something else, an Ultrabook, a NUC, a desktop PC, a gaming PC, they have it all. 
So check the link in the description below, click it and get your new device from Tuxedo. They're really cool. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you dislike it, well, dislike it and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you make way too much money, I'm always happy for you to donate with the super thanks button at the bottom of the video, the PayPal link in the description, or by joining my Patreon subscribers and YouTube members. Both get access to a weekly podcast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thanks everyone for watching and you'll see me in the next one. Bye!